Ach, ist doch geil, da vorne. Ein Grappel. Nice. Yeah. Maybe. I think I need to do something.
Good morning, and on behalf of the staff and faculty of Blue Mountain Academy, I'd like to welcome you to our Sabbath School, which we are uh, delighted to put on for you today. We're also very happy that our program is being live streamed on YouTube. So if you search for Blue Mountain Academy 1955, you will find that live stream. Our students have worked hard for this weekend and I know that they've had a lot of nerves and they really appreciate your support. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day that you've given us to, for a time to spend with you, to a time, for a time to celebrate the achievements of these young people as the seniors are getting ready to move on into the next phase of their lives, and as the juniors are getting ready to step into their shoes and take over the leadership of this campus. We ask that you be with us today, bless our Bible study, be with us. May we be a blessing to those we come in contact with. In your name I pray, amen. And you know why I feel happy? Because I know Jesus is here. There's so many of us, and Jesus is here with us. So let's be happy, and let's say happy Sabbath to your neighbors. Say happy Sabbath to your neighbors. Say, I'm glad you're here. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Alright, alright. So our first song we're gonna start with to praise God with Here I Am to Worship. Let's stand for that one. Let's invite God to be with us today.
Good morning, church. Um, today's mission spotlight is going to be on Greece. Um, for our class, we decided to go to Greece as a mission trip for our class trip, so that way um, we could use our class trip to share God's word with others and also spread his word along with um, having fun together as a class. Um, next slide. Go to the next slide. So some of the mission work that we'd be doing there is um, visiting the church in Greece, and we'd be able to help lead out in a church service there. And in the afternoon, we'd be able to work with some of the youth from the church in Greece to um, hand out food to the homeless there and other supplies that they might need. Uh, we would also be able to work with Adra in Greece. They got a new bus, and so there are refugees there from Syria, and we'd be working with Adra to help the refugees and any other tasks that they might have for us. There's also a Adventist camp there in Greece that has summer camp programs there, and it's kind of old, so we'd be able to help renovate it by like varnishing um, some of the cabins, um, fixing the bases of them, and um, there's some other tasks there too. Next slide. Um, 
with some of the remainder time while we were in Greece, we'd be able to visit some of the historic places there, and we'd be able to follow um, Paul's footsteps as he went to Athens and preached to the people there at Mars Hill and Agora, and we'd also be able to go to Corinth where he spent like more than a year and a half preaching to the people in Greece. We'd also be able to visit um, the ancient and modern Athens structures and the Acropolis, which was a uh, eleva elevated ground, and there's temples there to different Greek gods. Um, the, uh, there's also a stadium in like the mountains. It's called Epidaurus, and it's known for its famous um, acoustics. Because if you drop a penny down in like the center, you can hear it on the side. And there's monasteries that were built on rock formations that were used um, years ago for places. So, next slide. Um, our total expenses for each person would come to about 2000 and this would cover our travel costs, food and lodging, and um, supplies that we would need to renovate the camp. So, may the deacons please come forward. The deacons, please come forward. Okay, let's pray. Um, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that it's Sabbath and that all these people were able to make it here safely. Please be with us and help the program to go smoothly and help us to be able to go to Greece and help others and serve people there. In your name we pray. Amen. Today I will be talking about the one of the biggest stories in the Bible is David and Goliath, and a part of it, a part of it is how I'll be discussing how is about overcoming giants in our lives. Now I have a quick question for you: How many of you believe that you're stronger than a giant? Nobody. Okay. Oh, I saw a hand. Okay. So I need four volunteers who think they're really strong. Anybody? Okay, one. You can come up. Three more. Okay, three people who at least think they're strong. Two. Yes. Okay, I got four. Good. Now, come up, Sage. Let me. Up, Sage. You two. Both of you. Thank you, Mark. 
Excuse me? Okay, now I have a challenge for you. I want you to hold this with one finger for about a minute. Each. Hold it, like pick it up. Pick it up. One, I'll give you each a try. Okay, now do it for about a minute. I see him struggling. seconds. I think that's true. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Good job. Are you guys want to try? One finger. One finger. Okay. I got a timer. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, I think you're good. Do you want to try? Do you think you got it? Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Not your pick. Wow, he's doing it like no problem. Wow, okay. Is our index finger stronger? Yeah. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> uh, no thank you. <laughs> okay, you can set it down. Okay, now do you think it'd be easier if you got help though? I think it'd probably be easier if you got help. Like it'd probably take off a couple of the weight. Okay, so you can go sit back down now. Uh, could you take this over there? Please, so then I don't have to. Thank you. Okay. So, some of them actually got it, which I'm very impressed that some of them got it because I didn't think they get it. But some of them, they all seem to eventually struggle or seem like they wanted to put it down, but they wanted to, they kept going. This is kind of how, like, when we struggle, we usually need help, and we usually need help from God, and that's where we usually get it. Um, usually when God provides the strength we need, when, even when we don't even realize it. Okay, Deuteronomy 24 says, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you and fights for your... Sorry, for you against your enemies to give you victory. Which seems very powerful because, like, we tend to have daily battles every day. I especially, I know I do. Like, every day is a battle. But with God, we can get through each day and still find, like, great stuff within that day. So, can I get some, like, raise your hands for this. This is an actual question to you. Who is your favorite football team? Justin? Eagles? Okay, okay. So, how would you feel playing a game against them, but it was just you against the entire team? Do you think you could get a touchdown easily? No? Really? Okay. But yeah, just you against all of the players. Do you think you could do that? Because I know I could never do that. But, um, let me think. So, the story that you're about to read is, like I said, David and Goliath. This is probably how David felt, though, when he had to face Goliath. I mean, he was pretty tall, and this kid was pretty short. That's quite a comparison. But um, I would like you to read real quick in your Bibles, if you have a Bible around you. Read 1 Samuel 17, 21 through 49, and I'll give you about five minutes to read that real quick.
Okay, um, how many of you are close to done or done? Any? Okay, there's some. Okay. I'll give you around like a, one more minute to finish this up. Okay, can I get your attentions real quick? Okay, so like I said before, many of you guys already know the story of David and Goliath. I'm pretty sure everybody has eventually learned this probably in like cradle roll. But try, have you, I, I, at least I didn't when I was in cradle roll, but I didn't even really think about it that much. But try putting yourself in his shoes. Imagine facing someone who is twice the size you are right now. Do you really think you would win a battle against someone that big and that strong and that tall? And would you be able to put all your trust in God to be able to win the battle? Because lately we have a lot of hard times putting our trust in God with just little things that aren't even that big. But it's incredible to think how he put all his trust in God to face someone that big and that tall. So, I have some questions that I want you to guys to answer. So the first one is, what made David think he could fight and be, beat Goliath? Now you can talk to your neighbor about this question or your group, but discuss this question real quick. Um, does anybody have an answer they'd like to share out loud? Yes? Yes. Yeah. That's a really good point. Okay, that was a really good answer. Does anybody have a oh, mystico? I believe he probably hardly thought about it because he was so important for him to have God's honor upheld that he just was impelled to go do this. He did have prior experience of faith, but he knew that he had to speak up for God. Yeah, that's also a very good idea. Um, so, can we get one more answer? Over there, Tyler. I think it was because um, how he said in the Bible that God delivered him before from the lion and the bear. So he thought that God would also deliver him from Goliath. Okay. So the next question I have for you is what type of giants do we face today? First discuss this within yourselves real quick and then I'll take some out loud answers. So discuss with your partner, your neighbor.
Okay, can I get some hands for uh, over here? Uh, this way for the microphone is coming to you. Uh, we face, I think, stronger giants now. We don't have someone that's 10, 12 foot tall, but especially you guys, the youth, you have a lot of giants that you have to face. If you get sick, if you lose your job, you know, dealing with interpersonal relationships, um, how do I dress, do I paint this, and do I, you know, all those things. Living day to day, you face giants every single day. And only walking with God will you be able to, to overcome. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anybody? Um, I think one, one of the biggest giants we face today could be ourselves because of the way we get tempted by Satan or the decisions that we make, you know, we sometimes don't know how to face them correctly, and so I feel like one uh, one of the biggest giants that we face today is ourselves. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. I like that point. Um, anybody else? Okay. Get at least one more. Mystico. I think we often compare ourselves with each other, and that's uh, almost like yourself, but the fear of what other people think. Yeah, um, something about what Mystico said, how we compare ourselves to each other, is one of the things we should be doing is we should be comparing ourselves to God and trying to be more like God and be able to show God through your actions and your words. So I also, that is a very interesting point, too. So the next question I have is, does God give strength to people? So I want you to talk about that first question real quick between you guys, and then I'll, get, like I said, I'll get some volunteers to, to share their answers. So talk about the first question real quick between you guys. Okay, can I get some answers? Abby, and then over here too. Um, I think that God doesn't give people the strength. I think that God's presence, and when he is with the person, that's how they get strength, because his presence is, presence is there. And their faith is what um, you know, gives them strength. Okay. And there's one over here. Um. Oh. Thank you. Um, people often ask, why do bad things happen to good people? Um, God doesn't give us bad things, but he allows things to give us strength. Just think about the butterfly and all the struggles that it has to go from being a nasty, ugly looking worm to a beautiful butterfly. Those are challenges and, 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 and it makes you strong. So the bad things that happen to us, you have to even for those, thank God for them. Because it makes you stronger. Because if you don't have the rain, you won't appreciate the sun. But God does strengthen people. You know, he has the power through his Holy Spirit to give you all that you need in order to face your day. Something that actually reminds me about is I heard this phrase, I want to say like a year ago, and I try to think of this phrase every day because it helps me through my struggles, is God does not put us through stuff we cannot handle. So when you have a problem, just remember that because that can that will help you with your strength and being able to overcome it knowing that God who created the universe who knows all knows that you can get through this. Um, the next question I have is how can we get the strength we need from God? 
So discuss this between yourselves real quick, and then I'll, I can, you can raise your hands, but first discuss. Okay, does anybody have any answers they'd like to share? Okay, I saw Annalise over there. Whoever. Um, I think that the place we can get the most strength from is from God's word and from the promises. So we can get strength from him by claiming those promises. Yeah. Down. Oh, okay, over there. Uh, down right there. I'm sorry, very talky. <laughs> um, the, I think the main place where we get our strength from is talking to God, praying. Praying is a direct avenue. More, it's better than Wi-Fi. Um, it never ends. It's always there. You can pray to him 24-7, and he never stops listening to you. Our God doesn't sleep. Our God doesn't get tired. And that's what Jesus is doing in the temple right now, listening and waiting for your prayers. And when, he, when he, we do pray, and we, he receives our prayers, he, you know, he you know, prepares it with perfume, and he presents it to God, to his Father. I think that's so beautiful. So we, we shouldn't um, break that channel of communication between us and him. Always praying, always thinking about him. Mm. Now, when we do pray to help face our battles, real quick, let me just respond to this. When we do pray to face our battles, do we give praise when we won that victory? So when every, whenever you... You should always have a daily communication with God. So even when... Often we tend to pray when we need the help. But we don't remember to pray when we get the help. Okay, so over here. I think another way to get strength is also to surrender our weaknesses to God. And those weaknesses can become our strengths. Okay. Uh, are there any hands over here? I've been getting a lot of hands from over here. Brandon. Uh, yeah, I believe that when we pray, we can get a lot of strength. But like when we pray and we quote scripture, scripture in our pray, in our pray, in our prayer, <laughs> um, our the strength of our prayer can get a lot like deeper. And like once we pray, we need to walk around like that prayer is, prayer is answered, and that helps a lot with the strength of your prayer. Um, something about that I've noticed too, like I said, we hear when we often find the verses to help us get through stuff. But we often don't remember the verses that give him praise. So, okay. I forgot one more thing when they were mentioning it. Um, another uh, strength of our, of our um, a fountain of strength is each other. Sometimes God uses other people. Um, when you share your testimony, let's say I lose my job, I lost my job five years ago, and I meet someone that just lost their job, that's a, strength, uh, 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 a source of strength because the person's going through something. You already went through it, God helped you through it, and you can really help someone in need by sharing your testimony. Yeah. Well, our faith is somewhat, I would describe faith as, as like a muscle. And to, to strengthen that, you need difficulties. That's true. Um, so that's, that's the beautiful thing about difficulties, is it, it gives you an experience or an opportunity to say, okay, let's see what God can do in this moment. Um, but scripture, it's good to find out how to find out what God is doing in your life by reading the scriptures, and that's the beauty of the scriptures. But I think, I think David said it very well when he said, I love the Lord because he heard my voice. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what gives us strength, it's his love. When we see that he's doing something in our lives, we say, this is an awesome God. I'm willing to do anything for him. Amen. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. 
So is there anybody else before I move on to, I think, the last question that I have? Okay. So the next question. What do you need the most for the battles you face today? So discuss that between you guys and then raise your hands. Bless you. So before I have you share your answers, I actually have, I have an answer to this question too. And I thought this inter answer was kind of interesting. So something for me is when we memorize verses. Because, I mean, as we should have a Bible, like most students have a Bible in their locker. So we could always, always go there. But for the times when we don't have a Bible, and that's when we usually need the strength the most, memorizing verses allows us to carry strength with us wherever we go. Okay, so do you have any answers? Um, I think the first thing that we need is faith, and again, we already touched upon it, is you know our daily connection with God. But I think it's it's asking for the Holy Spirit in times when when the times are good. Because uh, bad times do come to all of us, and it's how you deal with it. Um, the Holy Spirit will give you patience to endure, will give you control of yourself so you don't go crazy, you don't um, get all stressed out like most people do when they have a problem. Um, you'll have peace. How do you think, you know, Paul and, and, and the others when they were in jail, here they are in jail and they're singing hymns. You know, that doesn't come, you know, humanly normal. It's only the Holy Spirit and being connected with God that that happens. So that's the, that's the big thing, having faith and having confidence in your Lord. Before we go on to the next question, uh, something interesting I would like to say is when we have problems, do we tend to panic or do we tend to sing hymns like uh, Paul? What should we be doing? And then which do we actually do? Okay, this is the next question over here. Well, I was going to sort of tie in with what you said about the singing hymns. We sang one this morning about Come Thou Fount, and the second verse talks about raising your Ebenezer. If anybody knows that reference, I actually found it here, it's in, doesn't say the word Ebenezer, but Joshua 4, when uh, the uh, children of Israel crossed over the Jordan, and he said, get some stones out of the bottom of the river here, and take them over to the other side, and you can build a monument with those stones to remember how God delivered you in the past. And I think it's Joshua 4 verse 7 that talks about that. But I think getting through the battles that we face is partly just remembering how God has delivered us in the past. And that should give us encouragement and strength that he's also going to deliver us in the future. Okay, first of all, um, I think for, that we need faith for the battles that we faced. And then second of all, we need a spiritual backup from the Word of God um, versus, and then we also need um, mental backup or whatever, for like from friends, like uh, close friends, we can tell them what we're going through and they can help you as well spiritually. Okay. Um, okay. Abby? Um, my... Hello? Hello? Okay. My friend Nicholas said that, you know, in order for you to have a connection, um, to face the battles, it's supposed to be, face the battles, um, you have to have a close connection with God, because if you don't, you go away from God, and you won't be able to have that co good co communication, so you just need a connection with Him. Is there a chance where facing our battles can actually bring us closer to God? Because I know with my personal battles in my past, it has brought me a lot closer to God. Because it helped me see how God worked through those battles with me to gain victory over them. 
and the dan and the the danger and the danger sometimes, like you were saying, with battles. I know a lot of my my friends that when they when they face things, they separate themselves from God. And they say, why did God ha let this happen? You know, they blame God sometimes. And we live in a sinful world. Sometimes there's no answer why someone gets sick, or why a young child dies, or, you know, those horrible things that happen every day. But we can't separate ourselves from the source of power. You know, if you let this little problem just separate you from God, then you're, you're you know, you're in a worse situation. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, over there, somebody. Like er test. Oh, there we go. Like everyone else was saying, of course, we need God to get us through these battles. But wouldn't it be nice, and I think the young man back there touched on a little bit about friends, but wouldn't it be nice if we could um, turn to each other for help through these times instead of um, having these barriers that are built up around us to help us through and pray together that we make it through these times of troubles? That's very interesting. Um, the thing is, though, we as we should we should have those close friends who can help us go to God, not take us away from God. But when it comes to as much as we can depend on them, we should depend on God more than our friends, because God is our best friend. He's the one who can actually get us through the whole entire situation and. It's it's amazing how he can he stays through everything. So every day we experience different types of battle. Like for students, you have homeworks, relationship, drama, stuff like that. And for adults, you probably have like work, um, bills, stuff, <laughs> adult stuff. And <laughs> so. Often there are times where I'm facing my own battles, and I think, you know what, I got this. I can get through this. It'll be fine. And afterwards, just like David, I realize I need God to help me get through these battles. I can't fight my own Goliath, just me, myself and I. I can't do that. But with God, I can get through it, and I can win my own battles. Um... So, as I let you go, I want you guys to, and not here, like on your own, I want you guys to find, you can find multiple verses, but at least find one verse that helps you remember that you are, sorry, that reminds you that with God, you are stronger than a giant. And hang it up somewhere, put it on your mirror, your locker, in your car, put it somewhere that every day you can see it, and every day you have that friendly reminder that you are strong with God on your side. Um, I would like to end with prayer, so if you could bow your heads and close your eyes. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, please be with us in all of our lately battles, and thank you for being there on our side, just like you were there for David. Um, thank you for all the wonderful things you've done for us lately. We praise you today, and we are great, so grateful as the Sabbath to worship your name. Uh, please give us a blessing we weren't expecting, and please be with the seniors today as they have senior representation. In your name we pray, amen.
discussed this before, the, you know, between the, the worship service and Sabbath school. I was just borrowed this time from juniors and seniors. Um, this is for church business. Last week we read um, four transfer requests from uh, other churches. Uh, we're going to read the second time. Esther Hernandez from Houston Spanish Magnolia Parks SDA Church to BMAC's church here. And uh, Deidre Rowe, Mount of Olives SDA Church to BMAC. And Haley Sanchez, the Well SDA Church to BMAC. And Flora Trevino uh, from Iglesia Universidad de Montemorelos. I tried my best. And to BMAC. So um, I think we can go with uh, one person each for um, the, you know, voting them into uh, our BMAC here today. Uh, those who are BMAC members can vote it. You know that, right? <laughs> We don't mean that uh, we are excluding anybody out of it. We welcome you become our members anytime again. Well, uh, let's start from Esther Hernandez. So is there anybody? Yes, motion. And the second? Yes, I see that. And in favor of it, raise your hand. Thank you. And uh, nobody opposed, right? Okay, now accepted. Esther, welcome to BMAC. And Deidre Rowe, again, and motion? And second? Yes, yeah, same people again. Now, in favor of it, raise your hand. And thank you. And uh, opposing? No. And Haley Sanchez, the Well Estate Church. Motion? And the second, I see that. Yes. And uh, in favor of it? Thank you so much. Opposing? I don't see any. And lastly, the most important, I believe, Flora Trevino again. Uh, motion? And the, the second two? Yes. And... Anybody in favor of it? Raise your hand, please. And no objections, right? All right. Thank you. For those of you who have been accepted to work, uh, the BMAC, we welcome you. And happy Sabbath, the rest of you. We'll be soon starting our uh, 11 a.m., 11 the worship service here at the sanctuary.